Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the second swing golf, and welcome to the Minnesota Women's State Open. We are outside the 18th hole here at Rush Creek Golf Club, and I am joined by Emma Carpenter, a golfer at the University of Minnesota, and she's competing in the Minnesota Women's State Open today, and we're gonna walk through her bag a little bit. So, Emma, you've worked with Second Swing in the past to kind of set up your bag, uh, specifically Larry, I know has been a big help in that. So, Absolutely. Um, we wanted to walk through your clubs today, uh, you know, and of course, as always, thanks for joining. Um, so kind of start us off here. Where do you want to, I mean, I'll let you kind of take it away almost. Uh, so walk through the bag, uh, wherever you want to start. Uh, let's tell the viewers maybe what's in your bag. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I have been ever since I uh, ever since I came up, came up to play for the U. I've always gone to second swing to get fit. So um, every single club that I have in my bag is specifically there's a reason fits to my game mm -hmm. um, is for, specifically for me. So mm -hmm. um, so I'll start with the iron. So worked with Larry a ton. I uh, came in, got fitted, and we went with the uh, Mizuno JPX 921 Hot Metal Pros. So um, mm -hmm. these guys are. Um, a little stronger lofted, yeah. but um, they work really well for my swing speed mm -hmm. because I'm still able to, to get them all up really high yeah. with a lot of spin. Mm -hmm. um, same thing. Um, I was coming off of a I was coming off of graphite shafts actually before I had some steel fiber, um, you know, part yep. steel part graphite. Sure. So we moved to the, the these uh, KBS Tour 90 yeah. um, stiff shafts. Okay. So um, steel stiff shaft was definitely what I needed just for uh, my strength and my swing speed that I got. You know. Uh, getting stronger coming to college mm -hmm. for sure so um they just work really well to you know just narrow in that dispersion and then still still get both the distance the height and the spin yeah for sure i think uh, one of the things the most common misconceptions i think uh, especially for like the female golfers that come in is they go right to the ladies section and oh. um that's a big mistake and we always try to say well just because you're a woman does not mean going to the quote unquote ladies section it's always about your swing speed how you deliver the club and so pretty good example here that you know it's not always going to be you know the women go to the women's section or or maybe even men going to the men's section it's just about your swing speed and how you deliver the club so absolutely yeah so um definitely notice the biggest difference right when i switched to these um before because it, the the shaft was a little bit a little bit whippier mm -hmm. you know um i definitely was kind of losing shots more to the left like hitting right. bigger draws but when i you know switched to the the 90 gram uh steel stiff shaft mm -hmm. i was really able to to dial in that dispersion perfect perfect so moving down the bag now yep um i know i guess the gapping on your wedges is really important when we talked about um you know hitting your warm-up shots you mentioned dialing your wedges in is a really huge component of your game so Absolutely. talk to me about that yeah, so so for for the irons, we decided to go with a, a four through nine. So I've got a four okay. iron, and then um, pitch wedge, and then it was it was a discussion. It was a discussion in second swing with Larry about whether or not I wanted to go with the, the Bob Vokey wedges, the SM8s, mm -hmm. and um, I've got the sixty degree that's actually bent to a fifty nine. Okay. Uh, with the um, eight bounce milled ground, yep. and then the fifty four that's actually bent to a fifty five. Okay. For the uh, 10 bounce and the stricker ground. Okay. So, and then I decided to go with a gap wedge that was actually a part of my iron okay. set with the, the Mizunos, you know, the JPX. So I decided to do this because I felt like um, I was hitting a lot of full gap wedges sure. into greens from the fairway. So it just matched up a little bit better with my pitching wedge. Say I was like maybe between a pitching wedge, just a little underneath, mm -hmm. rather than, you know, switch into a Vokey. I liked the feel of a switch into a, a gap wedge that was a part of my set. So this gap wedge is a, is a 50 degree. Okay. And yeah, matches up well with my pitching wedge. And then I've got these two, um, I've got the 55 and I've got the 59. So the uh, eight, a bounce in the yep. milled grind is definitely better for around the greens able yep, to sure. able to open up yep. open it up hit a lot of high lofty flop right, shots right. a little more versatility probably with that grind yeah absolutely as opposed to the 54 or bent to the 55 uh, it's got the stricker grind so yeah. this is definitely it's a little better sole for hitting it from the fairway because i mm -hmm. also hit this one from the fairway right right well. a lot of kind of your basic square face shots with that one mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but definitely another example of why having different grinds and uh, mixing that up a little bit with the sole uh, is best for golfers, you know, to be able to have maybe versatility with one wedge and maybe hit those square face shots with uh, your other wedge. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, and then it just kind of worked out just distance wise with the the 59 degree and the 55 just for uh, mm -hmm. just for gapping in the distances because I need to be able to know. Um, I like to use the clock system, you know, right. with uh, sure. whatever it may be. So uh, I like to know exactly how far. Um, right. 
each kind of swing is going. Sure, yeah. I mean, especially those that. wedges, they got to be dialed in, especially someone of your caliber. You're, you know, you 85 yard shot, 70 yard shot, you know exactly what shot, uh, what club you're going to hit uh, from that number. So uh, moving back around. So we got, we went from irons to wedges. Let's go back up maybe towards the higher, you know, right above the irons in your bag, maybe hybrids, fairy woods. What do you got in the bag? Yep, yep. So I feel like everybody has got one of these in their bag that's been in their bag for like 10 years or something that they just haven't gotten rid of. Mm -hmm. And that's this one for me actually. So this is a, this is a Ping G410 3 hybrid with a, the Fujikara shaft, mm -hmm. um, 60 gram regular flex. Okay. So, you know, a lot of my clubs are all stiff, yeah. but this one's a regular flex and um, you know what, it's just, it's always it's always set up well for me. Yeah. Um, my the way I like to swing it, my ball flight, everything. Just over the last probably five years, um, if you know, I'm really confident with it. I feel like I can hit it high, hit it, hit, hit it further. Um, you know, still land it pretty soft. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, just always set, set up well, got confidence, so there wasn't really a need to change it right now. Right, that G410 has been really reliable for a lot of players. You're not the only one that has kind of that same <laughs> feedback. So a uh, lot of lot of uh, forgiveness in there too, I know, with that club. So I, uh, you know, no, no surprise to see that in your bag, I think. Yeah, yeah. So now up to the three wood, or is it a three wood? Five wood, three wood, what you got there? I've got a three wood here, okay. yep. Perfect. It looks like Ping G425, I actually play the same one. Hey, <laughs> nice. Yeah, so um, so I switched to this about a year and a half ago. So we have three wood G425. So this one made a ton of sense for me because this one is um, comes out low, lower launch and lower spin. Mm -hmm. So for me, I don't have to really hit any three woods into greens unless it were, you know, say a par five. But I would say typically, you know, on a par five, maybe if I had in like a hybrid or a four iron, I would only use a three wood if I was really trying to chase it as far as I can. Right. So same thing with off the tee, this is a really good club to switch to. Um, if I don't want to hit the driver, maybe if I wanted to hit something a little lower or, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, it just is set up a little better to my eye. This one, I mean, I can get it going really far off the tee, just really low spin, just can really, really yeah. chase. So it made a lot of sense in the and bag. And maybe if you need that fairway finder off the tee, uh, maybe where you're not, you're looking at a hole, it might be a little bit skinny and you kind of, driver might not be the perfect play. You can take, go on three wood and you're still gonna get plenty of distance out of it yep. and also a little bit more control. Yep, yep, plenty. So yeah, same thing on, on a really on a really long par five, if um, it's not normally at all gettable, but there's room to kind of like get it up there as far mm -hmm. as I possibly can. This one's always sure. a really good play. Sure. Well, now I'm going to go to the big stick here with the driver. Oh, um, yeah. The old, the old trusty <laughs> big dog. What do we have in the bag off the tee here? So I've had this um, for about uh, coming up on two years, yeah. I think. And I do not plan on switching it anytime soon. Yeah. Um, I've got the TSI 2 head um, nine degrees of okay. loft. And yeah, um, that's that. Uh, that's the Tour AD IZ uh, from Graphite Design. And that's a popular shaft, a really good shaft, too. Yeah. Um, that thing is specifically, I think, a little bit higher launch. It's funny because you have like a little bit of a higher launching shaft, but then you have a nine degree head. So mm -hmm. that's kind of a unique combination that I feel like is a, you know, it's one of those club fitting kind of unique combinations. Exactly. That you, you get in a fitting and probably don't come up with. Uh, on your own least I wouldn't. <laughs> that's why, well, that's why I need you guys, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I need I need to swing and I need some help. So, you know, we tried heavier shaft, but it didn't really work as well for me. I, I wanted something that was light and I felt like I had control, but could, you know, still kind of rip it. Yeah. And then, uh, but the, the stiff shaft for my swing speed yeah. made a lot more sense. So the, the light, the light stiff shaft with the nine degrees mm -hmm. of loft in the head, it made a lot of sense for the, yeah. you know, like we're saying, high launch, low spin. Right, so. and you talked about how you kind of really like to maybe go after it a little bit off the tee when you Absolutely. have the driver and really swing after it. So it seems like that setup allows you to do that. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes the harder I swing, the straighter it goes, right. Drew. So you just yeah. gotta go with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I can say the same about my game, but uh, you know, the better golfers are able to do that. So uh, lastly now, we're, we're going on the green. We're hitting putts, we're rolling in birdies. Um, what do you have in the bag for that? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So this guy is pretty new. Love it. <laughs> and uh, so we switched. Um, I was using I was using an R Golf putter before that okay. Larry has a lot of those in second swing. Uh, it's a really, mm -hmm. really good putter. I had it for several years. Yeah. I never wanted to switch, but basically that one just had um, ended up having quite a bit of toe flow and this one's got still got some toe flow, but a little less. So okay. talking about toe flow versus face balance here. Yeah. So I like to have just a little bit of arc in my yeah. swing. This is, it's a pretty similar setup to, to what I had okay. before, but so I like to have a little bit of arc, but nothing crazy before it was more like this. Yep, yep. So um, it's, you know, still heavy. It's Scotty Cameron, mm -hmm. Newport, 
plumber's neck that I love. Just love the way it sets up and um, just just the right amount of, of weight and toe flow for uh, yeah. for my stroke. And then I also this grip on here. I like to have the, the thin soft grip. It yeah. feels a lot nicer. It feels like feels like it gives me a little bit more feel. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's, it's it's interesting to see you know how much you pay attention to that toe flow aspect. I think that's a, a uh, dimension of putters that a lot of golfers just don't really right. think about or don't even, you know, it doesn't cross their mind, but sure. uh, fitting it to your stroke, you know, maybe whether you're straight back, straight through, whether you have a ton of arc, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it matters in the putter that you do select. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it's good to see, obviously, I mean, someone of your caliber is going to pay attention to that and make sure that's dialed in, uh, in their bag. So um, yeah, that's a pretty good look at it. I think uh, yeah. all 14 clubs in the bag uh, and someone uh, with a division one type of pedigree, like Emma, uh, really dial in, it seems like. And I, very interesting too, a lot of mix of brands in the bag too. You got mm -hmm. some Titleist, you got some Pin, oh, yeah. uh, you got some Mizuno iron. So uh, pretty all encompassing Titleist. look, I think, yeah. in the bag. Yeah, oh yeah, I get, got all the different, all the different brands represented mm -hmm. in here. But um, like I said, each one has a specific purpose yeah. and definitely, I mean, I have like to say I use almost every club each round. Oh, so. yeah. Absolutely. Well, Emma, thanks for, for joining. Give us the time today. I know it's a beautiful day here at the Minnesota Women's State Open. And so uh, I think without further ado, we'll kind of let you get warmed up and uh, go shoot a little score today. Awesome. Thanks so much, Drew.